Hi, and welcome to Mindful, Beautiful, and Thriving, a podcast series by Tharaka Foundation focused on youth mental health. Before we begin today's episode, I just wanted to let you all know that all content that is found in our podcast is created for informational purposes only. This content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, treatment, or therapy. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition, and never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have heard in this podcast. Thank you so much, and without further ado, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Mindful, Beautiful, and Thriving. It is your host, Poonam, here with a very special guest, Projecta Moili. Today, we are going to talk about minority mental health. In some Asian cultures, as we know, mental health challenges are viewed as an individual problem or weakness. And talking openly about sadness, disappointment, or depression is rarely encouraged. I have faced those issues myself. So let's talk about why it is important to be aware of your mental health and what to do in times of need. Welcome, Projecta. I'm looking forward to talking to you. Before I ask you a few questions, please introduce yourself and tell us more about you and what are you doing currently. Hi, Poonam. Thank you so much for bringing me to this platform. I am Prajakta Mohile. I am a light brown skin toned Southeast Asian female with black eyes, black hair, and my pronouns are she and her. I am a business architecture leader in a multinational IT company, and I am uh, thrilled to be talking to you about this topic of mental health. Wow, this is so fantastic. So looks like we are going to have very important, good conversations. So did you go through any mental strain or mental health challenges in your journey? Because as you're explaining, you are part of a multinational company and I'm sure you are wearing many hats like a mother. So anything you experience in your journey? Absolutely, Poonam. You're absolutely right. I am a a mom, a blogger, a singer, a part-time gardener, a full-time employee of a multinational company, and of course, also a caregiver. We live in times, you know, where stress and overwhelm is a norm. In my personal life, too, at one point in time, I was going through a mental strain due to health issues and also as caregivers to my in-laws who were immunocompromised, my aging parents, my growing child, my fast-paced job. Striking a work-life balance was very hard for me. So, of course, yes, I did go through a lot of mental strain at that point in time. Uh, You're right, Projecta. You're not alone. I share the same sentiments as you do. And, you know, compared to those in other racial ethnic backgrounds, Asian Americans are the least likely to receive mental treatment. Only 20% of Asian adults with a mental illness received treatment in 2020, according to National Alliance on Mental Illness, NAMI. And this is due to many systemic barriers worsened by stigma, lack of culture appropriate and integrated care. So, I'm sure like now we are in 2023, numbers are maybe looking worse. So did you face any barriers while taking care of your mental health? I would like to say both yes and no. After facing the initial barriers from really well-meaning family members who just advised me to take it easy or not stress as much or everything will be fine. And of course, they had never heard of anyone in the family going through, uh, going to a therapist simply for being stressed out, right? Um, but they were very supportive of my journey on what I wanted to do. But my most difficult barrier was perhaps myself. We live in a culture where we are taught to just figure out mental health issues by ourselves and to just give it time and just to sleep it over 
and tomorrow will be a fine day. I was at a point where everything was going on around me at the same time. I was constantly in self-doubt. It felt I felt like I was a different person. When life does not give you that break and things are constantly happening around us one after another, it disturbs our mental state of being and it constantly makes us feel like we're on the edge or we are helpless or we are angry or confused or sad to a point where they start affecting your quality of life. That's the time to prioritize yourself. I agree with you, Prajakta, and I'm glad, you know, you're sharing your story and you, as you're saying, that self-doubt. So it seems like uh, you took some help and uh, how the therapy helped in your daily life. No, absolutely. I mean, like I said in my previous answer that I was a barrier to myself, but I did realize that it was time to get help. And there is literally one lesson that I learned is that there is no shame in asking for help and getting help. It doesn't make you a weak person. In fact, you're stronger and better because of it. So therapy actually taught me that no two days are equal, right? It taught me that I have a full right to feel happy and overjoyed and proud and ecstatic. But then there were also going to be days when I was angry or sad or grief struck. I learned that having negative thoughts and feelings does means that I am a normal human being. You know, we live in a society where perfection is overrated and we want to be happy. We constantly seek for that happiness. And we oftentimes get caught in that happiness trap. But what is important is to have that psychological flexibility to accept your current situation, understand what you can or cannot do about it, and then focus your energy on that one action that you can take to control it. And therapy helped me get through this. Uh, that's wonderful advice. Uh, do what you can control and accept what you cannot. And all the emotions are part of being human. And I'm so glad, you know, you took help and um, it worked. So are you still meeting with your therapist? Not really, Poonam. I believe that I took help when I needed it. But I do believe right now that I have enough tools in my toolkit to help me move forward at this point in time. But having said that, I do have a mental health coach that I check into from time to time to help me when I feel like stuck in my thoughts or I need an objective person to just listen to me. That's wonderful. I think that having that support system, listening ears, surrounding yourself with those people who can empathize with you who can uplift you is so important but i wanted to ask you another question how do you take care of your mental health on a daily basis so on a day-to-day -day basis i make it a point to at least practice one self-care activity every day be it spiritual reading meditation listening to music exercising uh, going on a nature walk just getting a pedicure or simply just calling, picking up the phone and connecting with my friends. You know, Oprah Winfrey has said that if your own cup is empty, you will have nothing to give others. Find whatever it is that one thing that you care about and you like and that makes you feel grounded and go for it. I love that advice. You cannot help and you cannot give to others what you don't have, right? Like your, if your cup is empty, yeah, how can you ex give to others? So it all starts with you, like taking good care of yourself, being in good mood, good health, then only you can be productive. So that's a wonderful advice. So what is your advice for the parents who are listening to our conversation? Poonam, uh, the most frequently asked question that I get is how do I find time? to take care of myself. I was attending a seminar a couple of years ago, pre-COVID, where the chairperson was Michelle Obama, and she was once asked by an interviewer when she was the first lady, how did she have time to do so many things, 
right? And still appear so calm, composed and collected. And she said, you know what? I put myself on the calendar first. When I do that, I have figured out that I have more than enough time to do everything else. And that holds true for everybody, right? If you're constantly irritated, angry, depressed, sad, or secret, secretly dealing with mental health issues and suffering, you are doing yourself and the others around you a disservice. If you put your time, money, and energy you need to heal your own mind, body, and spirit, you will come back a much more stronger person. I believe that you have only one life to live. So invest in yourself. Be your own champion because I believe life is beautiful. What a beautiful message, Projector. So generally, you know, parents, we always take on it to take care of our family. And then if we are working, then work also take priority. And then some, we tend to forget our own self. And I really loved your advice. You know, first, you need to take care of yourself. Um, and we do know that analogy where airplane mask, right? You need to put it on yourself first before even you take care of your child or a neighbor, right? So thank you, thank you so much for talking to us, sharing your story, your experience and wonderful advices. I can't be grateful, thank, thank you enough for uh, speaking to us today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me here, Poonam. I really enjoyed our conversation. You are listening to Mindful, Beautiful, and Thriving, a podcast series by Tharika Foundation. As part of our youth series, we will be releasing new episodes every Friday, so make sure to continue to check those out. We hope you enjoyed this podcast, and thank you so much for listening.